Hey everybody, welcome to Missouri Star Live. I am Misty Doan and we're so glad you're here. Jake is behind the camera uh, shouting out all your questions and things that come along. Yep, so, I'm here. Uh, there he Can is. you hear me now? <laughs> he is here and we are just... Mm. Hey, a hi from Dubai. Nope. Hi from Dubai. Awesome. None of my comments are showing um, up. So. Canada. Pennsylvania, Virginia, Anna's Massachusetts, watching from Italy, Washington, wow. Europe, Hungary. Amazing. Marianne from Texas, Vicky from Indiana. Thank you guys so much. UK, Florida, Vegas, Arizona, Iowa. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for being here. Guatemala, don't you? Is that a real person? <laughs> so fun. I love that we see people from all over the world. It's awesome. We appreciate you guys spending a little bit of your day with us. So. Super fun thing we're doing today. Um, I mean, I'm going to venture to say this is the best live ever. Best live ever. That's We got people that are <gasps> stoked in the chats. I mean, chat's coming through. <laughs> I love it. I'll take it. So we are so incredibly excited to be having Kay Fassett here in Hamilton, Missouri. And so he, his coming to Hamilton and doing a retreat and lecture and classes has kind of inspired this week's live. And so first I thought I would show you... Um, Jenny recently did a tutorial called Fancy Flight, and this is one that we featured in our block magazine following that same pattern. So you can see that here. This is a full quilt. And what I want to do today is um, use a charm pack instead of a jelly roll and make it a table runner. So that's what we're going to do. It's super easy. And I think this is a really great, great way for you guys to see that you can adapt these patterns to different pre-cuts. So what we're going to be using, we're going to be making this little one right here out of, of course. It's a reveal, Misty. I need a, hand, I need a Vanna White hand in front. Ta-da! <laughs> out of Kay Fawcett's latest collection, it's called Rainbow Stash for Free Spirit, and it's so cute. So first, let's do a little ooing and aahing over this fabric because it is just beautiful. Well, just just the, I think the color. Oh, the it's colors so, that I dig from from Kafe. Yep, Kafe, yeah. just happy, bold. I love these prints. They're so fun and different. And if the full rainbow spectrum is okay. available in this collection, okay, we have to pause for one second. Okay. Barbara R, we never recognized Rhode Island, but Rhode Island's in the house today. Hello, Rhode Island. Respect. We're so glad you're here. <laughs> oh, we have a problem on the upper camera. Michael's going to fix it. Here comes Michael. No, no, no. The upper cam's on. These are the beautiful legs of Michael. You've seen them in a Previous few lives. Previous lives. <laughs> we are live, folks. Oh, all right. Thank you, Michael. Okay, so if you didn't get to see that, let's go ahead and flip through this one more time. Oop, it's taped. Just a second. We'll slide this down so we can get a full view. Nice legs. There we go. <laughs> we'll just do some fabric flips for your viewing pleasure. So right, fun. Let's see, let's see them in the comments. Some ooze. Ooh, ah. ah. Those flowers, man. Some of those big prints uh, are intense. I love his florals. I think that's my favorite thing about Cave's designs. His florals are just so vibrant and beautiful and so much variation in what he designs. And they really all work together. And that's what we're going to show you in today's project. Oh, look at that one. It's beautiful. So much fun. All right. So that is it. His newest Robert, uh, rainbow you. stash collection. And we have it available in any pre-cut you would pretty much desire. We have it in the two and a half inch strips, the five inch squares, 10 inch squares, and as a fat quarter bundle. And if you are just a fan of Kate in general, let me make sure I get this right. We have 45 different pre-cuts of his to offer. So a huge selection and over 250 bolts of fabric. That's all Kate. So make sure you check it out. Tons and tons to choose from. All right, so we are going to Bre use... Brenda says she's on her way in a bus oh! watching live on the live stream. That's What's amazing, up? Brenda. Tell everybody from the bus hi for us. Yes, tell them hi, and we're so glad you're coming. So we're going to break into these five-inch squares for today's project, and we are going to make a fancy flight table runner. So what you're going to want to do, you're going to cut your whole pack of five inch squares the exact same way, but just for, you know, making it easy today, I'm going to get a few different colors here for variety. 
so that you guys can see. Let's grab one of these. And let's do maybe a green. And where's a purple? One of those. That looks good. All right, so I've just chosen four, but like I said, you're going to do this to your entire pack and you're going to cut it all the same way. So I'm going to stack these up and usually it's pretty safe to cut about four at a time. So that's what we're going to do today. Just make sure okay, you got it. We did have one question. Sure. Eva was wondering if uh, you could get the pattern for the quilt behind you. There's a pattern. There for is that, a right? pattern and, uh, a tutorial. and a tutorial for this is the Missouri Star quilt that's behind us. Um, so yes, you can absolutely. So just go to our website. Yep. Go to our and website. Search Missouri Star Quilt. Missouri Star That's pattern. That's a Missouri, Missouri Star, Star quilt. quilt pattern. Okay. So we've got our five inch squares, and I'm going to use my two and a half by eight inch ruler because it works perfect for this size of pre cut. And I'm just going to lay it on one edge. And you can see if you're looking at my mat that these actually are just a little bigger than five inches, just a hair, but we're going to be okay with that. And I'm gonna use my ruler, lay it right along the edge, and I'm gonna cut this in half. Ta-da! And then from one half, I'm going to cut it down to two and a half by four and a half. And these are all the uh, blocks. There's a few blocks layered up, so she got a few layers. Yep, I've up. got four stacked together right now. So this half I'm gonna cut down to two and a half by four and a half. So I've got those. This is my only waist. So I'm gonna get rid of that. And then this one, I'm gonna go ahead and cut in half again. So I have um, two and a half inch squares. Do we ship to Austria? We ship all over the world. Okay, so these are the pieces I'm going to need to assemble my little flying geese unit and so we need a four and a half by two and a half inch square i mean rectangle and two two and a half inch squares so what i'm going to go ahead and do is i'm going to keep my same colors together just like this because i want them to match on either side you could make it scrappy if you want but i just chose to have them match and i'm going to go ahead and take one of these and one of these sets and I'm going to mark my line corner to corner on the back. I'm just using a pin. You can use whatever you want to mark it. And that's going to be your sew line. So you can see there. And again here. If you're comfortable not drawing the line, you don't have to. I just like to for accuracy's sake. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to lay this right sides together and we're going to line up our sides and then we're going to sew right on that line that we drew. So I'm going to take this to the machine. I'm going to put my needle down so I can line right up with it. Make sure I'm all lined up with the edge of my uh, four and a half inch piece. I'm just going to take my time and sew right on that line. We can trim that. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that when this folds back, it's going to remain the same size. And that looks really good. So I'm going to go ahead and trim off my excess here. Leave a quarter inch seam allowance. You can do this with scissors or a rotary cutter, whatever you want to do. There we go. And then I'm going to take it to the iron. And we're just going to roll this back so my seam goes into that triangle. My iron wasn't hot, so we're going to give it just a second. Make sure I get a nice good press there. We got a first time watcher, Beverly. Oh, Beverly, How are thank you, you for Thanks joining for us. In. Okay, that looks nice. So you can see. It looks exactly the same size as we started. So now the reason that we cut this piece down is we want our two side pieces that we're putting on to overlap here at the top. And that's gonna protect our peak when we sew these together. So we're gonna put this on the opposite side again, 
right sides together and we're going to sew right on that line. And we're going to put this in here. All right, we're going mobile for a close shot. Going mobile. All right, come on, come on in here, Isaac. Isaac. You, you want, want to come, come around maybe behind my shoulder so they can see it from this way? There we go. So we're just stitching right on that line all the way to the corner. And we'll clip our threads. While we're sitting here, we can make sure that it's going to fold back where we want it. That looks great. So we can go ahead and trim and press. Okay, somebody asked, do you sew from the corner or the middle? From, like oh, from you know, I do it both ways. I don't do the same every time. So, but it might be a little easier if you sewed from the middle every time, just because you've got a little bit more stability there. Um, but it's really a preference. I think you'll kind of just get into a groove. When if Yeah, if you start chain piecing, I would do them all the same. All the same, exactly. Way. And I did chain piece these. I went ahead and sewed one side on all of my pieces through the machine. I just chained them all together and then I trimmed and pressed and I came back and did the other side to make it really, really quick. All right, so we can trim that one off. They say they keep losing us. We're coming in and out. Oh no, that's not good. Our internet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna rub the, uh, the internet router and try to get it to spark <laughs> up and heat up a little bit. Get it to wake up. All right, and so that is our little block that our entire project is based on. It's just a simple little flying geese block. And what we did for this table runner is we made three rows of 14, I believe. Let me double check. I said that with lots of confidence, but we better make sure it's right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And so that uses your entire uh, pack of five inch squares. It's, a, you know, no waste except for these little strips here, which I think is a perfect table runner project. All right, so what we're gonna do, let's make one more of these just so you guys can see it one more time. And then I'll show you how it sews together so nice. Let's do this one. Yeah. So again, we're gonna draw that line corner to corner on our two and a half inch square. Lynn wants to know the name of the fabric one more time. This is the Cave, Rain Cave Collective Rainbow Stash Collection. It's brand new and there's a link to it. Wait, what is it? The Cave Rainbow? Rainbow Stash. Well, look at the, look at the fat quarter. That says it all, right? Exactly, you can see. It really is a rainbow. It's beautiful. All right, so there we go. I've drawn the line corner to corner on both of these. So we're gonna do just like we did before, right side together with our corner going into the middle of our larger piece. Guess I didn't point that out the first time. And we're gonna sew right on that line corner to corner and then press it open. With this, you really just want to take your time and make sure that it doesn't get too wonky so that it's easy to sew these together. Those look good. So again, we're going to trim our quarter inch seam. And you can see, since I'm moving around a lot, why it would be easier to sit and chain piece these and put them into the machine one after another. It goes really quick. There's that one. So now we'll put this one with that line going the opposite way so that it's going to cross here at the top, line up our edge and take it to the machine. Whoop! I caught that one. Hold on. made a big goobery mess on that one. Just a second, let me grab my seam ripper. I mean, we gotta give a shout out to our mobile cameraman, yes, Isaac. Yes, Isaac, coming in with this. Coming in clutch with that close up, That's ladies. That's right. Ooh, I really made a mess here. <laughs> Sorry, friends. Let me just get these stitches out. 
They're all in one what little What size is that knot. rectangle? It's four and a half by two and a half is the rectangle size. So it's just cut down a little bit from a from a five inch five inch square. Yep. What on earth? Linda thinks you're a cutie, Isaac. <laughs> That's my nephew. Mm -hmm, yep. Oh, all right. This is still not breaking loose. I really, I don't know how I did that with just a few stitches, but take our time and get it out of there. There we go. All right. That was really a mess. I'm actually going to take this over and press it really quick. Just because I kind of stretched it out trying to get those to break loose. And I want to make sure our blocks are accurate. There we go. Whoop. <laughs> Linda wants to know if you have an uncle or a grandpa. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> She's talking to Isaac because he's cute. Uh, <laughs> Linda, you're awesome. That's awesome, Linda. Okay, so we've got this better. Now I'm just gonna take this here and we're gonna sew corner to corner. I keep losing my presser foot. There it is. There we go, we made it that time. All right, trim our threads. <laughs> And then we will trim our seam allowance here. And if you were like feeling really, you know, not wasteful, <laughs> you could come back and you could turn these into tiny little half square triangles that you trim off. And that would be a intense project. It but, would, but it would be adorable. It'd be amazing. Yes. All right. So let's press so this Nancy's back. So Nancy's asking your relation. So I'm Jenny's son. Yes. And then Misty's my wife, so we claim her. Yeah, so they keep me around, you know. All right, so we've made two of these, and the next thing I want to show you is you, if you can see here at the top of our, our little flying geese, we have just enough here to not lose our peak in our seam allowance. So what you're going to want to do is we're going to lay these together just like this, and of course this one's really goobery from my stitch problems earlier. But you can see here where the, the threads cross. Hopefully you can see where it comes here and here. And what you wanna do is you wanna stay on this side of where they meet and then you will not lose your peak. So we're gonna take this to the machine. We're gonna sew a quarter inch seam and just make sure if you need to make it a little more scant to keep your peak and just that's what you want to watch for. I'm going to make sure these stay lined up where I want them. Oops, this shifted a little bit. Just a second. There we go. What do they say? Line up twice, so once? That's right. You might as well do it right the first time. That's coming from the construction days. <laughs> and I'm that might not even this. be a construction saying. Measure Maybe. twice, <laughs> once? I think it's just a life That's a quilting rule. saying. Yeah, absolutely. That comes from the original quilter. There we go. And then we can take this over to the iron. <laughs> Linda. She's too funny. She's like, we need more close-ups. <laughs> <laughs> he just got married. He's Guys, blushing he's too, yeah. New, he's a newlywed, <laughs> and you're going to give him a complex. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Here we go. You're going to make us lose our close-up cam. <laughs> He there you go. Knows it's, cute. it's going to his head. <laughs> you can see here, we did not lose our point right there. It turned out great. And all I did is I sewed this 14 in a row three times, and we I sashed it with one and a half inch uh, black sashing, and it turned out just like this. I might actually, because I haven't quilted this yet, as you can see, I might go ahead and add a I don't know three inch border around it just for good measure. But I think it's such a fun and happy table runner project and remember you could make this out of Christmas you could make it out of um, any holiday fabric it would be so cute with the holidays around the corner Thanksgiving a Halloween it would be really really fun but I also think it would be adorable in Christmas because of all the little points it would look like a Christmas tree 
Okay, so yeah, very fun. I've been distracted, but if you guys have any questions, <laughs> let me the know. The chat is hilarious today, but if you have any questions, ask questions about the the project we're doing. Yeah. I think it came together awesome. Flying geese. What do they always say? Ducks fly together. Ducks fly together. Gooses yeah. fly together yeah. as geese well. Geese fly together. So it's it's a super super quick project. I, literally, you can whip this together in an hour, hour and a half. Just super fast. And it'd be great for a gift. And like I said, we were just so inspired by CAFE. So I thought I would show you a few of the other things that we have here at Missouri Star. Um, Carla was asking if you quilted before you got married to me. Um, I didn't quilt, but I sewed a lot. I grew up sewing. My mom and my both my grandma sewed. And I actually, that's not entirely true. I did help make quite a few quilts, um, but I didn't make my own quilt. So... Somebody also said, what if you alternate the middle row and then it'd be like... Yes, and then they could be going different directions. Absolutely. You're, you know, whatever you want to do with your imagination is just totally yours. Take this idea and run with it. I can't wait to see it. So first up, I want to show you this book because it is so cool and so inspiring. This is uh, Kay Fassett's autobiography. What? Scoot it up. Oh, scoot it up. <laughs> Sorry. And it's called Dreaming in Color. And... If you follow him on social media, you know that he is just so inspiring. He does so many creative things, and it's just really, really cool to look at and learn from him, and it's just stunning and beautiful. So if you're interested in this, it's definitely worth a read. We also have some kits here at Missouri Star using beautiful K fabric. So this first one is called Freestyle Stars, and it uses his um, Spring 2018 collection which you, we can't see because it's inside, but it's lovely. And so you can see that on the, on the front there. And then this is another Freestyle Stars. Oh, so I see there's two different colorways of the spring 2018 collection. So this one is more of the blues and purples, and that one was your reds and oranges. So that's really fun. And then does looking for Christmas gift ideas. Do it, we have that? Uh, make one of these table runners. One of these, but isn't there a show in the future planned? Oh, maybe. We'll see. With a few projects? We d we're, always, we're always dreaming up projects over here, so it's bound to come. And then this one is a checkered Dresden kit, also using that um, those blues and um, purples from the spring 2018 collection. It's just beautiful. And like I said, we are so incredibly excited to have Kafe join us here in Hamilton. He is doing a lecture that is sold out on Wednesday, but there are, because of a few cancellations, some classes still open Thursday and Friday. There's a few tickets left. These are like intense six hour amazing classes. So if you have the chance to come, be sure and grab a ticket. Um, we're not sure when he'll be back in this area again. So we're so thrilled to have him here. So if you're close by and you've always wanted to learn from CAFE, be sure and come. Sure. Uh, Yes. Barbara had a quick question. If you could show how you don't lose those points one more time oh. with a close-up. Okay, let me, because I sewed these together. So let me just, let me just wink, take these wink. apart. We'll do it one more time. Also, I do have to say a lot of these funny uh, comments are coming through on YouTube. If, so if you guys re-watch this on YouTube, you might see some of, the, some of the funny that we're laughing about. Don't get me wrong, Facebook. You guys are great too. but We love you both. All right, hold on. Because that was some of the feedback we got at birthday bashes. You guys were like, who the heck are you talking about? Yes, I we're always live on both platforms. So if you don't see the comments on your platform that you're watching, it's probably on the other. My seam ripper does not want to seam rip today. Renee's asking, how far ahead should I plan to get into a receipt or if she's going to, into a Oh, they usually do sell out pretty quick, but they post them... Like regularly. Right. Yeah. So Mary's gonna post a link to the retreat the so, you, so you can see them. I might need a new seam ripper. This one is not helping me today. There we go. Got it. Isaac, the public is requesting a close up. <laughs> All right. So you can see I've got my two. I want to have my my geese going the same direction. So I'm gonna fold this one up this way. And I should have used contrasting thread so you could see this better. But you can see here where Fearless. my yeah, where my this. thread crossed. Come on in here, Isaac. Let's show them this. You can see where the threads cross. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> you, Linda. Right there, it makes this little X. You see, get up in there real yeah, close. Yeah, get closer if we can. 
See, right there. Oh, okay, that's there we beautiful. Go. And so what you want to do is you want to stay on this side of that um, X right there, and that will keep your point. So we're going to take this to the machine. We'll sew so on one the top, more time. on the top side of that X. This, yep, exactly. So zoom in on this real quick. All right, so you can see, got it lined up here at the machine. And we're just going to take a quarter inch seam. You can see it coming into the machine, and I'm just making sure my needle stays and it's just on the right top side on that, that side. Ta-da! And then when I open it up, see? We, our little peak is perfect. Closer, Isaac. Ta-da! Oh yeah, that's perfect. Looks awesome. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope this was a, a little bit of inspiration for your week on something you can whip up quickly. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed seeing all these beautiful prints and uh, projects from Cave. Like I said, we're so excited to have him here in Hamilton. And if you missed it earlier, we have so many of his beautiful collections. We have 45 different pre-cuts, over 250 um, different bolts of his fabric. So it's really awesome. Um, just in case anyone wondered, as I have this done here, just like so, it unfinished measures 17 by 32 and a half. Um, like I said, I might add a border, but if you did it just like this, that's the size that you'd get. Well, quickly to finish it up, could you talk about how you would uh, machine quilt that on a on your machine? Oh, absolutely. A so bit of I am not by any means a free motion quilting expert at all. That is something that I'm still working on and learning. But if it were me, I would probably, um, I don't know, probably echo stitch around each of my rows. So I'd come in just like the presser foot's width away. You scoot I, it up just a hair. Sure. I don't like to actually stitch in the ditch because I think it's kind of tricky. <laughs> so I would probably come in just about, you know, presser foot's width and just come in on each of these. So it would quilt this down and then I'd come in and do kind of the same thing in my triangles and I would just make my triangles kind of stand out that way and that's what I would do you probably don't even have to do the triangles but if you wanted to I think it would look really cool so so we don't have like time I said, to quilt I'm, it today we but don't have time that. and I am very very basic um, quilter at this point in my life and that's okay <laughs> you know we're all at a different point in our journey and if you all you wanted to do was straight line whatever you wanted it, it would just turn out great so don't fret too much over that part but anyways that's all I have for you guys today if you want to join us at Jenny on the Road we will be in Bartlesville Oklahoma next week on the 18th it's just one show at 10 a.m. that morning and we would love to see you there come and join us but other than that yeah, for sure. You guys week. have been great. The chat was awesome today. Yes. <laughs> we appreciate you. Enjoy Thank you so other. much. And we'll Enjoy see you next week. Enjoy the rest week. of your Tuesday. That's see you right. next week. Yep. Bye. Over and out.